Hello and welcome. Today we are in the new tier 9 Dutch large cruiser, the Johan de Witt. Today I streamed playing the ship on a press account on the Russian server and I decided to make two matches into a video. So there will be a second match later on. The Johan is a large cruiser. The main ability that stands out on her is the airstrike capability. This has 12 kilometers of range and they have 36 millimeters of penetration. Other than that, she is well armored, she is decently maneuverable and she has good stealth. The downside of the ship is obviously the firepower. The guns are 240 millimeters, which does allow you to overmatch some of the light cruisers that you can meet. However, the AP penetration is about the same as a Talon and the HE DPM is fairly low, it's barely above 100k. On top of that, the range is limited to 16 kilometers, which means that you obviously want to take the range upgrade and, <laughs> well, I just ran aground. That wasn't quite the nicest decision, I suppose. So on this ship, I find that HE spamming as the main ability is pretty effective because fires do end up dealing a lot of your damage. Wait. Is that a double fire? And that's after the uh, Soyuz actually put out the earlier other fire, right? So let's try to maybe set a third one too on the very rear. Come on. <laughs> we got one. Yes. That Soyuz has three fires that she can't put out going on her at the moment. And that's actually something I found the uh, Johan to be pretty good at. She seems to be very good at starting fires. She should have battlecruiser dispersion. I say should because I honestly don't feel like the dispersion is a problem, which is weird. On the Harlem I definitely felt like it wasn't good enough, but for some reason on the Johan de Witt it seems alright. Although the numbers, at least as I'm told, say that she still has battlecruiser dispersion. So I'm not really sure what's going on over there, but the guns basically... They don't... The AP doesn't feel very good. The HE straight up damage doesn't feel great. But the fires she sets... She, she sets a lot of them. I had several matches where I started more than 10 fires. Although I guess I didn't try playing only AP or mostly AP. I did favor HE quite a lot more than AP because... Well, having talent penetration is... It's not the greatest, let's put it that way. But I suppose it might work. I mean, right now, I've had quite a lot of broadside. Also, running aground here was not bad at all, actually. This has been an extremely good spot. Seriously, look, I've been able to just shell enemies from here with barely nothing in return being done to me. Running aground here was actually... This, this is a great spot. I had no idea that this spot was here. But it truly feels great. Something like a Des Moines being parked here would be even better, I suppose. Anyway, that Caracciola is within 12 kilometers, so let's use our airstrike ability on her. And let's just stack them. Okay, wait, is she turning into the cap? Is she? No, no, she's turning the other way. Okay, let's try to lead properly. And yeah, let's just stack them. And now let's go meet the Caracciola. Oh, 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 that's looking really good. Oh. That's looking really good. Come on. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's what, 21, 22k damage just like that could buy to half your HP, basically. Wow, that, that lined up perfectly. So, as I mentioned, these have 36 millimeters of penetration, which means that if your deck armor is lower than that, these uh, airstrikes with their parachute bombs can end up dealing incredible damage. So these send out 10 planes, which each should drop uh, six bombs. But obviously it's on a large area, so usually you don't get hit by, well, most of them easily. I find that they're most useful against lower tier battleships and actually cruisers. Well, cruisers that are really big, really small cruisers are kind of difficult to hit. Also the airstrikes are not very effective against uh, very strong anti-air. That Petra knocked out everything except one plane. 
So if you have a group of ships and there's a lot of flak, it's entirely possible that the airstrike just gets knocked out before it actually lands. And then obviously there's the problem that some ships have decks that are too thick, which means that even when the bombs land, they don't deal all that much damage. But against cruisers, that tends to not be as big of a problem. Well, usually. She also has heals that cool down faster, a hydro and defensive fire. In fact, speaking of defensive fire, her anti-air is also incredible. Like, seriously, seriously good. Goodbye! Goodbye. The planes appeared at 2.9 kilometers, by the way. In that last one, the Hakuryu still got her drop off, but that's a tier 10 CV. And on top of that, she appeared at far closer than my entire could have started firing at. That's some pretty damn good anti-air. I do have one anti-air skill spec though, but still, it's pretty damn amazing. At least when it comes to self-defense, because the amazing anti-air on the ship is at 3.5 kilometers and less. Although, she does have a lot of flak though. I think this one has like 7 or 8 bubbles, which isn't obviously the greatest, but it's a lot of them. And flak bubbles are pretty scary when the opponent has defensive fire, which this ship does. You don't even have to choose between hydro and defensive. In fact, I think other cruisers that right now can choose between defensive and hydro should get both at the same time. Don't give it to super cruisers because they seem to already be good enough, but regular cruisers. You know, ships like Hindenburg and Zhao. So. I really want to go to the other side, and I think our Alsace over here needs to just back off. She's being airstruck right now, but the reason I think she needs to back off is because the enemy has a Maka. And, well, the destroyer is something difficult to deal with for a battleship. I could go support her, but I really just kind of want to go fight other ships more. Because those cruisers over there are probably just going to keep running unless they're forced to get closer. And I think giving up a cap. Uh, would be worth it. Just hold on to B and C, because, I mean, we don't have a destroyer here to fight the Maka, so it would be extremely difficult to uh, win against them. Wait, what? The Gustav Julius Maka is not actually going for the Alsace? I mean, I get it. They're, they're destroyers mostly made of gunboat stuff, but they still have torpedoes that have enough range to stealth for. Why wouldn't you use those in this kind of a situation? But I suppose... She can still pretty safely deal some more damage, but really she should be heading to the ACAP, I think. Ooh, a fire on the Johan! If we can get a permafire on her, they last for 60 seconds. That would be a lot of damage right there. Maka's, uh... Wait, am I being... Oh! Oh, look away, kids, look away! This is how new destroyers are made. I guess it'll be a German and Dutch hybrid, huh? So... If we could get a fire on that, Johan, that would be great. Yeah, no, actually, she has a permafire. That's gonna deal a lot of damage. Um, I guess we need to get unstuck. I guess if we both turn out, we should be able to get unstuck, because Eger's bow she seemed to have been stuck on my side. But now we're free, it seems. Good. So now... I guess we're not heading over to sea anymore, because all the enemy ships to fight are kind of over here other than those two far, far away from us. But I suppose the game is kind of over. We have control of all three cap zones. They are... We also have a numerical advantage. Oh, Rune is heading closer. She's within 12 kilometers, so we could... Oh, she's slowing down. Let's just dump both uh, airstrikes on her. Maybe it'll work out. Oh, oh, she's going to be so perfectly in that. Oh, look at that. That's so perfect. Some of the planes are being shut down, but that's all right. Come on. Woof. That's over 12k damage, just like that. And that definitely used her damage control party. So if we can set another fire, that's gonna do quite a bit of damage. 
We could engage the Maka. Oh, one thing. These large cruisers, when I say that they're well armored, I truly mean it. We're talking battle cruiser levels. Wait, the enemy only has 50 points left. So if I sink the rune, the game is over immediately, right? Because if you lose a cruiser, you lose 50 points. So that would put them at zero, which means the game ends immediately. See, it says minus 50 right there. So we're going to go after the Maka instead, because that one's minus 45. So when we do sink the destroyer, the game doesn't end yet. Aha, that's a little... Uh, that's a little advice to farming up your personal rating. See? Game not over yet, and now we go and try to finish off the rune. Yes, a fire! Excellent! Wait, she damage never mind, she had DCP available already. But we're gonna get an airstrike up in a few seconds. And she is within range. Last time it went pretty well. Come on. Come on. Okay, I think she might have stopped reversing. So only half of our ship will be in the strike. Or maybe none of it. Depends on her acceleration. Oh, the game ended before the strike hit. Anyway, <laughs> well. But we still had a great game. 132k damage. Only sank one ship, but we got 14 fires and we had some pretty amazing airstrikes this game. 34k damage with the airstrikes, 48k with fires, and 49k with the main guns. The fires did basically as much damage as the main batteries. Oh wow. Time for game two. The first one had my airstrikes be extremely successful. This time we'll have a lot less luck with it. So, this is a match with a single destroyer, a Fletcher, and no aircraft carriers. So, I decide to go for the cap zone because I am a fairly stealthy cruiser. The only ships that could potentially threaten me are the Yugum, obviously, because, well, she's a destroyer. The Brindisi, because she has a smokescreen and is able to then get out when necessary. And the enemy, Johan David, because obviously we share concealment. But everything else I should be able to outspot, so I should be fairly safe. I can head into the cap because I have the stealth, and even if I do get spotted somehow, I should have the tankiness to be able to at least get out and survive. But that's looking pretty scary though. An Alaska, a Georgia, an Azuma, a St. Louis on the side. A, I guess the Soyuz is far, that doesn't really matter. And the Alaska is heading closer! Okay, I'm gonna airstrike her and I guess we're just turning and running because I can't really fight the Alaska, I think. Okay, Alaska turned, so I guess airstrike doesn't really work. Maybe we can do it on her way out. Because she's definitely gonna turn out. She's definitely not going to uh, stay broadside on like that. And yeah, I think there's the destroyer here because there's no destroyer in the middle, right? Oh, look at that. Uh, a little too early. I led a little too far. But still, 4k damage. And Alaska has definitely used her damage control party. If we can... Oh, and that's a permafire. Excellent. So that Alaska is gonna burn for a while now. And I mean, it's not like things are over yet, right? She's gonna take more damage here. By the way, one uh, side effect of going close like this is that... Oh, another fire. Nice. One side effect of going close like this is that uh, my allies are also more likely to head closer to the cap zone. And, well, the cap zone is being capped, which means that the Yugumo is definitely near the decap. I think our son Louis over here is pretty... Oh, got the Alaska. I think the son Louis over here on our team is pretty screwed, though, because she went too close and there's no way she can properly disengage from the destroyer's spotting. And the battleships, uh, etc. are just gonna take her out. And there are the torpedoes from the Yuguma. Yeah, I'm gonna head over to the other side, I guess. I'm gonna get slightly closer, because right now obviously I'm unspotted, but... If I do get spotted, I can always just kite backwards. And look! All of this cost me what? 7000 HP? Maybe we can get a lucky salvo on the Yuguma here. Because I'm unspotted right now, so she has to be on the very edge over there at... Right? Maybe we'll get lucky and decap. With HE, it's possible. 
Oh well, it didn't work out. That's fine though. Okay, so it's time to yeah, head over elsewhere because even with my range upgrade, I still don't have enough range to be able to engage these ships. I think that Georgia fired on me, so we're gonna slow down and turn out a little bit. And there are the Georgia shells, and we're completely safe, because we're far away enough that it's fine. But yeah, basically, I knew that my spotting covered uh, almost all of the cap zone and I was unspotted, which meant that the destroyer had to be on the very edge. But we just got unlucky with uh, where our shells landed. But HE does explode, so it's entirely possible to get a decap like that. Oh, oh, is this looking really good? Wow, three shell hits like that. Honestly, the guns feel really a or accurate enough. Like, I don't really have problems with the accuracy of the guns, which is quite surprising. I did have a problem with it on the Harlem, but somehow on the Johan David, I haven't really had much issue with it. I don't think, yeah, I don't think I can lob shells over that. Oh, our Pomman seems to be in trouble, Yuguma torpedoes. But I suppose she can just turn in. Maybe she'll eat like one torpedo. Wait, there's another set of torps. Wait, what is that from? No, seriously, there's a second set of torps. Maybe Brindisi? Oh, Yuguma doesn't have smokescreen, maybe. Maybe she has reload booster. But anyway, I want to head over to the other side where the islands should let me get into closer range fights. Sea is still in under our control, but actually this means that caps are split. But since we do have a ship's lead, we're gonna be alright. Oh! Yugoma is gonna try to take the sea cap and she's spotted here! Seattle radar! 13,900 HP. Ooh, 3,300 damage. Nice. Can we do another one, please? I could try to airstrike her, but chances of that hitting are pretty slim. It's still something I could do. <laughs> 2,400 as well. Again, three shell hits. Seriously, I'm hitting so many shells on this ship. I don't really understand how. Maybe I'm just getting extremely lucky, but I think that's good night to you, Guma. Yep, goodbye. And this should give us a massive advantage, as long as the Fletcher stays safe. Considering he has survivability expert, I have some uh, trust in that Fletcher actually surviving. Because obviously, he's an expert at survival. Oh, <laughs> that was a very embarrassing salvo. I missed... An Iowa. She went sideways too quickly. <laughs> oh well, that happens. These are 240mm HE shells, by the way, which means that you can penetrate 40 millimeters of armor with HE. Therefore, Iowas and other US battleship deck armors, well, I suppose not the dreadnoughts, but the uh, Montana and the Iowa and the Missouri and the North Carolina. You should be able to penetrate their deck armor, which means HE should deal quite a lot of damage to them. On top of that, obviously, there is the fire chance that we seem to have quite a lot of. Oh! Soyuz is... she's going forward, so I'm gonna drop both airstrikes on her. And, well, we're gonna take the risk of showing a little too much side to the Iowa here, but we kinda do want to go behind the island instead of in front of it. Ooh, 4k damage to that Soyuz, that was actually a pretty good drop. And we got a fire from it, I think. <laughs> well, Iowa managed to not hit any of the shells, straddled me a little, but uh, we're still safe and sound. Oh, a Georgia is coming around the island. Well, maybe. I guess I'll just point my bow towards her. So the ship has also basically an armor scheme very similar to the Harlem. So there's a 40 millimeter icebreaker, so to say. What is that armor plate called at the front? It's not really an icebreaker, right? So what is it called, I wonder? But anyway, that means even Georgia can't overmatch the bow. The top part of the bow is 25, but actually hitting that part of the ship is pretty hard. Also, Brant Alarm. Oh, another Johan David. Wow, that's... Wait, is it the same guy? 
think that might be the same guy. Anyway, a Sovetsky Soyuz at 7 kilometers. I mean, I don't really have to worry about it. She doesn't have torpedoes, so it's gonna be alright. I'll just reverse away here, point my bow towards her, and I should be fine. My airstrike is up in 2 seconds, so we should be able to airstrike her as well. I f I've found that um, when you have this kind of a standoff at close range, it tends to be fairly easy to airstrike someone, because it becomes quite obvious what they're going to do. But because the Soyuz decided to show me broadside, I am gonna switch to AP. Okay, our airstrike is not the greatest, but it should still hit the bow and potentially cause a fire. <laughs> okay, now I wish I kinda had HE again. Cause she- oh no, she is showing more side again. Why is she showing me so much side? I mean, I can't penetrate the Citadel, but I can get regular penetrations on the upper belt. Also, I kind of have to go forward because uh, there's a little Azuma sneaking up on me on the side, potentially, if I keep reversing. Come on, more upper belt hits. Nope, still getting some non-penetrations on the main, on the Citadel protection, I suppose. But she's already gone, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, if we're gonna fight an Eger, what's the... Yeah, I guess I have to worry about the torpedoes. I really do not wish to be in a close-range fight with an Eger, at least not too close. Because she does have, I think there's 6km torps, right? So as long as I stay further than 5 kilometers from her, and I'm sailing away, it should be alright. Is she gonna show more side again? It's... I know I'm gonna take a lot of damage when doing a turn like this, but I think the armor is good enough to be able to survive that. At least most of the time. And, oh, can we land a good airstrike, maybe? Right now I would like to have HE loaded. <laughs> okay, I wasn't paying enough attention, that's a lot of damage again. Oh! The enemy Johan is doing a strike on me. Let's try to shoot some planes down. Okay, I don't know where those planes went. Oh, I suppose they were striking someone else. But we did get a fire on Eger, and Eger is a large cruiser or super cruiser. Which means that fire is gonna tick for a lot of damage. We have... Actually, we have half the HP of the Eger, but I'm... I like my chances considering how much support I have. And I do have a heal up in a moment. Besides, she won't actually get to torp me because I already made the really risky maneuver of turning away. That's a second fire. You know, I like that the secondaries are going off. At some point Wargaming buffed secondary range on cruisers and stuff, and I think that actually kind of made them useful. Because these can still start fires and that's pretty nice to have. It also means that you really don't wish to stay within secondary range for extended periods of time, even though they aren't like very effective, they can still start those pesky fires. Come on! Ah. Five ricochets! <laughs> yeah, I should have used HE, huh? And goodbye, Eger. And now we're gonna fight the Johan de Witt. Oh! An airstrike's coming in. Maybe we can nab a few planes. Although it'll probably happen afterwards. After the strike, that is. Okay. I don't know how to aim on a target that's on the border like this, so I just aimed center mass. Should probably be close enough. Oh, come on, 200 HP, really? Oh well. So during my stream, I didn't really have any very impressive games, but I had some pretty fun ones where things went rather well, like this one. This was a pretty damn good game. Sank three ships, 131k damage, got 11 fires. Number one in XP, of course. This time, airstrikes only did 9,000 damage. Secondaries actually did almost half the damage the airstrikes did, but look at that. 39k fire damage, 65k HE, and 13k from AP. Overall, the damage types are different, but I think I would still rather have torpedoes than these airstrikes. That Eger would have had to be scared of me as well. Let's take a look at the Johan de Witt in port. This is the perma cam of the ship. 
Also, this is the new Rotterdam port. Looks pretty cool. If you're wondering how can I zoom out this much, it's because I'm using a uh, port zoom mod. Looks The port looks really cool. So, captain skills first. I'm not entirely certain of the last points on how you use it, but I went grease the gears. I think this is really important because this is a 30 second turret traverse otherwise. Then uh, priority target, superintendent of course, concealment expert, adrenaline rush. And after that, I wasn't sure anymore. I decided to go for a top grade gunner despite the fact that the ship's concealment is really good. I decided for it because, well, the DPM on the guns is not that great. And you're going to end up in situations where you are closer than this 10 kilometers to the target you're fighting. And in those situations, the better reload that you get from this skill, I think, will be worthwhile. But this is still only 17 points. On a 21 point captain, you still have another 4 points to go. So I decided to go for Expert AA Marksman. And the game suggested last stand, uh, and I figured I'd take gun feeder as well. But honestly, this last stand has been completely useless. I don't think this is necessary at all. So instead of that, I would probably take... I actually don't know what I would take. I don't think any of the skills really are that worthwhile. I suppose you could drop these two and go pyrotechnician or something. I don't know. Could maybe also consider outnumbered or RPF or something like that. These are all options you can choose. So the reason I took a, a expert AA marksman is because you saw the anti-air, right? That was pretty crazy good. Because this expert AA marksman gives you one extra flak bubble and 25% to priority sector. So instead of 50% bonus, it'll give you a 75% bonus instead. So the reason is that with this, the ship has eight flak bubbles. So the more flak bubbles you get, the better your AA is going to be, the harder it is for a ship to avoid all of the flak. The other thing is that the continuous AA DPS, it's 173 at 6 kilometers, that's not that unusual, but 3.5 kilometers is 541. Now keep in mind that when you use defensive fire, that's a 50% bonus. So you use this one, that's another 75% bonus on top of that. So this anti-air, the straight up damage gets crazy high. And because of that, I think uh, taking this skill to boost it even higher can be worthwhile. Because as you saw, the tier 8 CV didn't even get a strike off before the planes were all knocked out of the sky. Although I do think she ran into one flak bubble at least. But even that Hakuryu that appeared at 2.9 kilometers had trouble. But I suppose maybe that also means that the skill is not worth it. That's something to consider for you, I guess, when you get the ship. Upgrades wise though, I went with the range upgrade, mostly because this gives you more options. With it, it's 18.6 kilometer range. If you don't use this, you only get 16 kilometer range. And I feel that it limits your options too much, especially because the ship doesn't really have trouble hitting at this kind of long range. Also, maybe you could go auxiliary armaments mode so you had another two flight bubbles. <laughs> and even more AA DPS, that would be ridiculous though. But maybe somebody makes a competitive build with it. Although I suppose probably not with the tier 9 one then. Then obviously concealment. Then I use damage control because this uh, this takes 60 second fires. Otherwise I would probably like to have steering gears because it does have a 12 second rudder shift. And improving that would be nice to have but you, propulsion would also be nice. Then I use uh, dispersion upgrade obviously. Then Hydro here, if I didn't have that, then Damage Control as well. And finally in the first, first slot, Main Arms Modification 1. So, I guess let's take a look at the armor scheme. It's basically very similar to what the Harlem has. 30mm deck armor, 25mm bow, and a 25mm stern actually. This one is actually a lot less protected than the bow part. But there's this 40mm armor plate that gets to the very front. And every AP shell can ricochet off of this. Then there's a 27mm torpedo protection belt, which is by the way 19%. And a 40mm side armor plate. So uh, every AP shell can ricochet off of that armor plate too. 
Behind the uh, torpedo protection belt, you have a 225mm main armor plate for casemate. Then behind that, you also have this kind of uh, turtleback, but it's 25mm, and I don't know how this 25 adds up when, you, when you're dealing with AP shells that can overmatch it. I don't know if this is actually counted or not. And then behind that, you have a 40mm torpedo or the citadel. But even then, the citadel still sits only slightly above the waterline, so it's not the easiest to hit. You'd probably have to be at longer ranges. And all of these armor plates, they do add up, right? These the 40mm and 225 belt, they are gonna definitely add up. And I mean, that is that is almost battleship levels of thickness. So if you angle this, it's pretty hard to get through. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, and I hope I'll see you guys next time.